Hi, I'm Rita Foster, the nurse at the health one of the nurses at the health department at East Shore District Health Department, a health department that serves three towns, Branford, East Haven, and North Branford. And I am going to be talking to you today about coronavirus. Um, first, I'll let you know about some of the health department functions, which include we work with our state, federal, and health care providers during the virus to get all the information out that we have. Uh, we work with our, with our town officials and school officials to keep them informed of the latest activities going on with coronavirus. We do disease surveillance, so all diseases that are reportable by the state of Connecticut get reported to the health department, and we track how uh, the trends in them, and coronavirus is a reportable disease. We maintain an active medical reserve corps, which is a group of volunteers who are medically trained and non-medically trained to provide services to our community. Uh, during the typical flu season year, we have a lot of medical reserve corps people who are nurses and they help vaccinate the public. And we have non-medically trained people who help with forms, um, traffic control, and other functions. Um, also new this year, we are working on um, contact tracing, and I will get into that a little bit more later. So what is the difference between COVID and the flu? So when COVID first was around in the country, there were a lot of similarities between COVID-19 and influenza. Symptoms of COVID include fever, tiredness, dry cough, those are the most common, also aches and pains, nasal congestion, runny nose, sore throat, and diarrhea. Some people now are experiencing sense of loss, uh, loss of taste and smell as well. Um, this is a new disease. However, coronaviruses have been around for years. Uh, coronaviruses sometimes cause the common cold, but is obviously not as severe as the current coronavirus. Um, antibiotics do not work against COVID-19. There is no vaccine for COVID-19. It is spread through respiratory droplet. So when somebody coughs or sneezes, they can spread it to you um, if they laugh or sing as well and get their respiratory droplets on you. Hand washing works it's to keep you healthy. Um, there are no antivirals for COVID at this time. The flu vaccine or the flu virus has similar symptoms such as fever, cough, sore throat, runny nose, muscle or body aches, tiredness. Some people have vomiting and diarrhea, and this is usually more common in children. It's been around for many years, although the flu vaccine um, changes. So back in 2008, we had a H1N1 pandemic where it was a new flu virus that we were seeing. Um, there is an annual flu vac vaccine, which is strongly encouraged for people six months of age and older. It is also spread via respiratory droplet, so when somebody coughs or sneezes or breathes on you or laughs or sings and spreads their respiratory droplet, hand washing works to help keep you healthy. Antivirals do work with flu virus. What are some things you could do to stay healthy during a uh, coronavirus pandemic? Stay home as much as possible. Do not be around other people. Practice social distancing, which means staying six feet away from people or more when you see them. Um, that way, if they are talking or if they happen to cough or sing or laugh, you will not get the respiratory droplets on you. Frequent hand washing. So if you touch a surface that's been contaminated by somebody who just coughed on a, a doorknob and you touch that, if you wash your hands, you're not likely to put the virus from your hand into your um, mouth, nose, or eyes. Um, take care of yourself, be active, get your rest, eat well, and take care of any pre-existing conditions that you may have. Uh, wear your mask. As of April 20th, 2020, the mask wearing requirement in public has been mandated by the governor. Um, if you're sick, stay home. Do not go out if you're sick. If you had to go out, to be sure to wear a mask. Wear it properly, cover up your mouth and your nose. And clean commonly touched surfaces with an approved uh, cleaning product. Don't shake hands. That is, these are just some of the ways to keep you healthy during the pandemic.
cases around the world have really skyrocketed, and we're seeing in this country more and more cases currently. Um, Connecticut right now is in a good locate in a good spot because of the strict precautions that were mandated several months ago. In our district of Bramford, East Haven, and North Bramford, as of yesterday, Bramford had 344 confirmed cases. East Haven had 423 confirmed cases, and North Bramford had 88 confirmed cases. Um, in Bramford and East Haven, there are some long-term care facilities that had um, many cases to add to their total. Um, for deaths in Bramford, we had 40 deaths. In East Haven, 39. In North Bramford, 4. So some people who are at higher risk, there's two vulnerable populations people who are age 60 or over, and people with underlying health conditions, such as diabetes, heart and lung conditions, perhaps high blood pressure, um, COPD, asthma, people who have cancer and other diseases that affect their immune condition, where they maybe take an anti, um, uh, a steroid that suppresses the condition or other medications that put them at higher risk. And how does coronavirus spread? I already touched on this. So as you can see, when somebody talks, their respiratory spray comes out on the other person. Uh, it's respiratory droplets. So when you um, talk, it happens. But when you cough, cough, sneeze, sing, laugh, it happens even greater. When you wear your mask properly, and it's covering your nose and your mouth, that spray is contained within your mask. If you cough vigorously, it may come out the sides, but for protecting other people, wearing the mask properly prevents this from happening. Um, there are some scientists and medical doctors now who are saying that there is a possibility that coronavirus, when somebody breathes in a room, the, um, it's airborne, so it stays in the air and people could get sick that way. Um, people who are, who are hospitalized and on a ventilator their breathing is controlled by the ventilator, and so their respirations can be more airborne easily than if I was just in a room as I am right now. Um, they are still doing studies on this to determine that how if that is a situation where you could get it that way. A disease like measles is airborne, whereas if somebody's been in a room and left the room, two hours later they could still somebody who comes in the room could still get the uh, measles if they have not been vaccinated okay contact transmission this is when as i started to say before when somebody touches a pen perhaps and i just was touching my face and breathing on my pen and i put it down and somebody else picks up my pen and touches the pen and then touches their mouth nose or um, eyes they can introduce the virus into their face that way and become sick. So that's why it's really important to wash your hands. Don't share your pens. Um, frequent hand washing after you have been in a building, wash your hands. After you've touched other surfaces, wash your hands. So mask or face coverings. As I said earlier, in April this year, it was determined that we, everybody in Connecticut has to wear a mask. Um, there are different kinds of masks. Uh, there are exceptions to people wearing masks, people who have medical conditions that prevent them from wearing it. So um, somebody who maybe is on oxygen, wearing oxygen um, in their nose may have a condition where they can't wear a mask. Some people who have COPD or um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, maybe asthma, um, emphysema, or some other lung condition that keeps them from breathing easily when a mask is on their face. Also, children under two are not required to wear a mask. Um, also, somebody who could not control it, like if it was somebody who had some um, incapacities that they couldn't manage having the mask on, they would be exempt from wearing a mask as well. And as I said, it covers up your mouth and your nose to keep the respiratory um, droplets contained. When you're wearing a mask, you also want to be sure that you're not touching it constantly because if you just touch somebody else's pen and now you're touching your mask and that pen was contaminated with somebody who was positive for COVID, you could introduce that, that the virus onto your mask and essentially um, contaminate yourself. There are different kinds of masks. 
Um, there's a N95 mask, which is worn by medical providers traditionally when they are treating somebody who has COVID or if they think they will be exposed to somebody with COVID. That is a uh, fit tested. So you put the mask on and you are tested to see if it works for you, if it fits, if you um, can smell this aroma that they put into this uh, testing apparatus. Um, that is really intended for medical workers to keep them from getting COVID. A surgical mask, which is what this is, is usually a one-time use only. Um, it keeps your respiratory droplets from contaminating other people and therefore not getting other people sick. And a cloth mask, such as a bandana, or some people could make it from a t-shirt. I did hear somebody who made it from a large sock. Um, these are um, affordable, washable, and reusable, so there's a lot of uh, plus to those. Again, if you're going to be touching it a lot, you need to wash it often. There are um, directions on the CDC website on how to make your own mask that with a t-shirt by cutting it. And um, so if you couldn't find, get yourself a mask there, that is an option. Testing. Testing for uh, COVID. There are three different tests. The nasal test, which just goes up your nose. The nasal pharyngeal, which goes way back your nose almost to the very end of your nose. Um, that is the gold standard for the test, I have been told. And a throat swab, which would go down your throat. There's also antibody testing, which is blood work to detect if you've had the virus already. Um, with any of these tests, there are not 100% accurate. There's many tests out and available, but they are still trying to deter, you know, make it the as accurate as possible because you don't want to ever get a false positive or a false negative and not know what you should do with that test. Um, there is a company in Brantford that is working on a saliva test, which to me would be um, much easier than any of the nasal uh, swabs. So people with symptoms should be tested for coronavirus. Um, you either need your doctor's order or some places you could use that facility as your doctor's order um, that are available in our three towns. Healthcare workers have been tested. Um, people who work in hospitals, nursing homes are testing all their healthcare workers. Assisted living are testing their healthcare workers. Um, residents of a nursing home, assisted living, prisons or homeless shelters are tested as they live in congregate settings. So they want to know if somebody, if one person is testing positive, they would like to test everybody to see that who has it. It, is, it was very easily spread. We saw it in Washington state when it first came to Washington in a nursing home. They didn't know that was happening as quickly as it did. And in Connecticut, they are doing testing on a regular basis and they're people who live in um, long-term care and assisted living and prisons. Um, some, it, we are recommending that if you've been in contact with somebody who was tested positive, that you get yourself tested to see if you have it. Um, some states are requiring you to get tested before you come to their state. I know the state of Maine, I know some people who went to Maine and they had to get a test and prove that they were negative before they went to the state. Um, and some jobs are requiring tests to be done before the people return to work. Um, these uh, situations have changed throughout the pandemic, and I suspect that some of them will change again as we go through more time with the pandemic. And what do you do if you're tested positive? So isolate for at least 10 days since the start of, since you um, were tested positive. Isolate means stay home don't have any visitors, don't share a bathroom. If you have the luxury of having a separate bathroom to yourself, that would be the gold standard to not share a bathroom. If you do have to share a bathroom, to clean the bathroom after each use. Same with your kitchen. If you have to share a kitchen, use it um, and then clean up after yourself. Don't use it at the same time other people in the house are using it. And if you are out in the, in the house, if you share a house with somebody else, wear your mask to keep the respiratory droplets from going on anything that you are near. Also, if you have to leave your house for whatever reason, be sure you wear a mask and, you know, make the contact as limited as possible. Let people know that who you've been around, that you did test positive so they could be aware and look for symptoms themselves. Um, it's also the people before you were tested, 
and before you had symptoms, you were contagious two days before. So if you were tested positive on a Monday, then on Saturday you were contagious. You should let the people know Saturday and Sunday that you were around them if you were around people that you tested positive. Okay, what if you were around somebody who tested positive? You were supposed to self-quarantine for 14 days. Similar to um, in Connecticut, we're asking people who are coming from the hot states that are having a lot of cases of COVID to self-quarantine for 14 days. So if you've been around somebody in close contact with someone who tested positive, we want you to self-quarantine as best possible. No visitors for those 14 days. Avoid sharing common areas like bathroom, kitchen, again, similar to isolation. You have to leave the house, wear a mask, and you know, avoid being out for any long length of time. And the recommendation now is if you have been exposed to somebody to get yourself tested. If you get tested five days after you were exposed to somebody and you're negative, that's great. But we still ask you to self-quarantine for 14 days because it's up to 14 days that you can still come down with the disease. Most commonly, people come down with the disease between two and six days after they're exposed, but it's up to 14 days. So if you um, have to go to, back to work, what are the criteria for returning to work? According to the CDC, you need to be at least three days without having a fever uh, before you can go back to work, and that's without taking any medication like Tylenol or Motrin or ibuprofen or acetaminophen. Um, recovery is designed, yeah, without the use of medicine. Improvement in your respiratory symptoms, so your cough has gone away or greatly decreased. You have, um, at, it, it's been at least 10 days since you were tested positive, so that um, if you were tested on the first, then it would be 10 days after the first that you would need to stay home. Even if you're feeling well, it's still 10 days from the day you were tested. The health department has, in May, or actually at the beginning of the pandemic, we started with contact tracing, but in May, the state rolled out a program that we're using to help us track people we can contact. So if you tested positive in, our, in Brantford, East Haven and North Brantford for COVID-19, the health department will give you a call to check on how your symptoms are. We're gonna ask you if we could have a text message or an email go to you for the next up to 10 days, or if you'd prefer a phone call. These will ask you on some of your symptoms to see how you are doing. Um, we also want to know who, who you are around. That's, we wanna know your contacts so that we could contact them in order to alert them that they've been exposed to somebody who has tested positive. We don't share your name. We just let people know that they were exposed. Um, if you are not willing to share that, we do ask that you let people know so that they could be aware of the symptoms. And what's next? So several com uh, companies are working on a vaccine for, the, uh, for COVID and human trials have been started. The hope is that by the end of this year, we will have a vaccine or early next year, a vaccine that's available to a limited number of people to start with, and then it'll be open more to the community. The state is reopening in slow increments. Um, because of the rest of the country, I believe the governor slowed down phase three, where bars were not opened and other entities were not opened yet. Um, just because the state is, is reopening, it doesn't mean the virus is gone. Precautions still need to be taken. Um, there are some websites you could go to for further information. The CDC website is uh, cdc.gov. The state website has information on the coronavirus as well as um, the reopening plans and the guidance for the bu different businesses that are around. And the East Shore District Health Department website has a lot of information. If you have any other questions, you could always call the health department and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. And our phone number is 203-481-4233. Thank you.